untamed, free, the sky for their roof, the earth for their floor. These brave horses of the wilderness roam the land, thrilling in speed, proud in spirit, strong in courage. Like thieves in the night waiting for their prey, men come to conquer, to steal the freedom of these gallant animals. Outstanding in the herd with less fear and more courage than the others was a beautiful high-spirited red horse, the most desirable prize of them all. She was the one we were after. You know, I wonder what Milrick wants with a wild horse. Don't worry about the boss. Anytime he's willing to part with a couple of hundred, there's a reason. You always have beautiful thoughts about people, don't you? Well, has got an angle. I got an angle. You got an angle, that's all. Only miller has got more angles. I take horses. No angles. They're honest. They're faithful. Some of my best friends are horses.
Glad you're back. So am I. You can start breaking the horse from the show this afternoon. Sorry, Miller. She isn't going to be in the show. It's funny you're telling me what's going to be in the show. She's my horse. You're getting paid for her. Well, I don't want that reward. You found her on my time. Right, bud. You don't have to pay me for that. Nor the three weeks you owe me. For five days, I fought with her, and I'm keeping her. I'm not turning her over to you to break or sell. I don't like the way you treat horses. No, you don't. Maybe you think I ought to put carpets in the stalls. Why, you? I won't settle anything. Ever since yesterday, when we were at the water hole, I knew you were going to do that. Love at first sight, Ted? What are you going to do now? Where are you going? You can't just wander. She's got to eat, and you've got to eat. Sorry, I'll figure something out. Jim Martin, foreman here. Anything I can do for you? Oh, thought you might need an extra hand. Well, I might. Is that your mare? Yeah. Has she broke in yet? No, not yet. Well, I guess there's always room for one more. One thing I ask, though. Hard work and no trouble. And break that horse in on your own time, huh? Thanks. Come on, I'll show you where to bunk. Training horses was always easy for me. And though I'd been around them since I was a kid, I never had an animal like Bess. Maybe it was wrong. I didn't think so at the time, but I started teaching her tricks. High school stuff, we call it. Simple at first, like shaking her head to say yes. To stop and come to me when I whistled. Then more difficult tricks, like shaking her hindquarters in rumba time. No tricks were too difficult. It was a big game. Besides, Bess was in love with me. Daniels, I'm going to have to let you go. The horse takes up too much of your time. <laughs> well, baby, looks like we're out of a job. I can see you're going to be a lot of help to me. Yeah. You've been in a rush. All week long. We're not heading any place particular, and I don't care when we get there. <laughs> okay, boss. Have it your way. <laughs> All right, old girl, you pick it. Just as long as you don't backtrack. They say it doesn't make any difference which turn in the road you take. We took the turn into town, and it made all the difference in the world. Hey, don't give me that, baby. This was your idea. <laughs>
by myself. I worked at the weaver's trade. The only, only thing I did that was wrong was to woo a fair young maid. I wooed her in the wintertime and in the summer too. And the only, only thing I did that was wrong <laughs> was to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. Yeah. Hello, Woody. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Oh, I just thought I'd renew acquaintances. Now, if it looks the same, maybe a little seedier. Is this the same horse? Are you, baby? Tell me, where have you been? What have you been doing? What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd pick up that prize money. Uh-oh. Miller can't go to like that. I could use 250 bucks. You know he always tries to keep the prize money in the show. Oh, that's too bad. Still sign up for the contest with Billy? Yep. I think I'll go see her. See you later. Come on, baby. This contest open to all? Sure is. Ted Daniels. How's a lot of pretty girls to fight? Oh, can't complain. That isn't the wild horse. Bess, I want you to meet Billy. <laughs> Tell me, do you think now that I'm no longer an employee? <laughs> <laughs> With a horse like that, a man doesn't need etchings. Now, Bess, let's show Billy what you can really do, huh? See here. Yeah. It's fine. A rocket. Come on, rocket. That a girl. That's a girl. Balance. Steady, Bess. Hold it. Balance. Balance, Bess. That's a girl. Take a bow, Bess. Giving you the meanest block he's got. Thanks, Woody. Don't worry about it. Last rider is Ed Daniels. Second event will be cap roping. 
too long. Doctor, you have a multiple fracture of the leg. Fix it up, Doc. I'm a guy that needs two good legs to make a living. You hurt bad? Oh, I don't think so. How'd he make her walk up this plank? Why didn't you ask him? Come on. Come on, get on this board. Back, back. Get in here. You knothead. <laughs> Come on.
you got a riot on your hands, Sheriff. How about the damage? I'll hold the horse for security. Send your bills down to my office. Take her down the stable. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Well, so you're finally awake. He's come along fine. How do you feel? My leg feels funny. You can hardly move it. <laughs> You'll get used to that. You're in a cast from your knee to your ankle. Cast? How long is that going to last? Oh, about 10 days. Oh. Then you can be moved out of here in a wheelchair. Wheelchair? Moved? Where? Well, you have a family or some relatives that can take care of you. Not a one. Well, you can't stay here. We're both overworked as it is. Oh, Dad, I, I think we might be able to manage it. Has Beth been any trouble? I meant to ask you about that. She's wonderful. I knew it. You know, you haven't stopped talking about Beth. Who is Beth? My horse. She's here. No. There's no horse here. The sheriff wants to talk to you. The sheriff? Oh. oh, is it about my horse? Yes. She all right? I've got her at the stable. Oh, that's a relief. Thanks. Oh, Sheriff, would you do me another favor? I've got some money coming to me from the rodeo. Would you mind dropping by and... Don't waste no more breath, son. The rodeo left town two days ago. Two days ago? And what's more, I didn't come over here to do you no favors. I came over to see you about these bills. What are those? Claims for damages done by your horse. Amounts to over $200. Excuse me. Dad, Dad, we've got to let him stay here. Don't you see? He's helpless. Oh, now, you've helped plenty of people before when they've been down on their luck. I'll take care of him. Well, I suppose we're stuck with him. At least you're stuck with him. Thanks, Dad. How do you expect me to pay these bills if you won't get my dough? It ain't my business to go chasing all over the United States after some rodeo. I can't chase. I can't move. Either the bills are paid or I'll carry out my duty under the law. Which is what? I get a court order to sell your horse at public auction. And I pay off the creditors for the proceeds. In the way it says in the books. Good day, Miss Craig. Hi, Sheriff. I've got good news for you. Dad says you can stay. Hey, did you hear what I said? Yeah. Thanks. Would you do something for me? Of course. They're going to auction Bess. Would you find out who gets her? Sure. No, I don't know your name. Penny. Penny Gray. Penny. I'm Ted. Ted Dunn, I know. Woody told me. Glad to know you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll start the auction. What I hear for an opening bid on this fine, flawless spirit of man. A hundred dollars. One hundred dollars is paid. One hundred and ten. One hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten is bid. Do I hear one hundred and twenty? One hundred and twenty. One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty is bid. Forty. One hundred and forty is bid. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. Are you all through? Surely, ladies and gentlemen, I can hear more than one hundred and forty dollars bid for this fine animal. One eighty. One hundred and eighty is bid. Do I hear one hundred and ninety? Do I hear one hundred and ninety? One hundred and eighty-five. I hear 185. All right. 180 once. 180 twice. 
Excuse me, lady. It's a nice horse you've got there. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Were you planning on stabling her around here? No. Nope. Well, um, can you tell me where you're taking her? Look, lady, I'm working for an out-of-town buyer. I don't know who he is or what he's going to do with the horse. Come on. you find out who he was, where he was going? Because I couldn't make him out, dear. He wouldn't tell me anything. That's great. I'm sorry, Ted. I, I did the best I could. I, excuse me. I think your lunch is about ready now. You're quite a surprise to me. I figured any man that Penny would go to so much trouble for would, uh, well, would be a pretty solid guy. What are you getting at, Doc? She tried to buy your horse at the auction. Did you know that? told me about the auction. He gave me a book to read the other night. By Mark Twain? Yeah, by Mark Twain. It, it had a line in it, something like, if you take a hungry dog into your house and feed it, it won't bite you, which is the principal difference between a dog and a man. I want to say that he's right. I'm sorry, I just proved it. And Penny, I feel like talking some more. You better take advantage of it. I don't feel this way often. You see, until this accident happened, I never had to count on anybody. I guess I never wanted to. Sort of an independent cuss. I uh, worked for Millerick's Rodeo for a while and for ranches around the country. And when I got tired, I just quit and moved on. It was while I was working for a millerick that I found Bess. That's a story in itself. Uh, this may sound funny coming from a grown-up guy, but she was the first thing I ever had of my own. Uh, the first thing I ever really wanted. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe it doesn't make sense. It's something you have to feel. Maybe I'm talking too much. Anyway. I think I understand. Penny, the man who bought Bess, what did he look like? Was his name Millerick? No, I, I, I don't know. Oh. Uh, was he um, a tough-looking fellow with a, a broken nose? Yes, he was, dear. When do you think I can leave here? Mm, a month or so. A month? gentlemen, we now present our star attraction, Beth the Wonder Horse. 
a horse with a human mind. All right, Grass, take my hat off. Take my hat off. Add a girl. Now, don't get it dirty. Don't get that hat dirty. I told you not to get that hat dirty. Now, pick it up. Pick it up. Come on, pick that hat up. What are you going to do about it now? Look at that. All dirty. Now, what are you going to do with that hat? Oh, you're going to brush it off? That a girl. Come on, clean it off. Clean it off. That's a girl. That's a girl. <laughs> Beth, do you know what I think? I think these are the greatest horses in the world. Oh, you don't think so, huh? Well, who do you think is the greatest horse in the world? Give me a kid. Come on, give me a big juicy kid. Big juicy kid. That a girl. <laughs> All right, now give me a hug. Come on, give me a big hug. Give me a big hug. Come on, give me a big hug. Big hug. Come on. like a baby. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And best thanks you. Doc Gray's seemed to pass rapidly. Maybe Penny had something to do with it. 